You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, which can be found on our website at treyerwilderness.com and also on iTunes. Welcome to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where we are homesteading traditionally 100% off-grid today and offering preparedness and survival tips for tomorrow. Here's your host, Tammy Treyer. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining me here on the Mountain Woman Radio. I am really excited to have a very awesome guest with me today. I'm hoping that many of you have listened to the previous show, podcast number 129, where my husband and I shared our health journey. And this podcast today is a continuation, basically, of that, because I am blessed to have Dr. Susan Kolb joining me today. She is the author of The Naked Truth About Breast Implants, From Harm to Healing, and she is also the founder of Plastico Surgery Center and Millennium Healthcare in Atlanta, Georgia. And honestly, she is the angel that saved my life. Um, Had I not found her and had God not led me to what was going on with my body, I would still be very sick and, and basically dying. So I am very grateful for her expertise, and I am so thrilled to have her on here because since we put our video out, we have to date saved seven lives. And those are people that not only had breast implants, but they also had a silicone stomach belt. And others have had the silicone um, ports put in their body for different purposes. So any time you have silicone in your body, these same symptoms will apply. So I encourage those of you that have friends and family that have some form of silicone in their body to really listen to this interview because it's going to be an extreme wealth of information. Dr. Kolb is a just walking wealth of information. I wish I could follow her around with a pencil and paper all day long because she's really amazes me with her knowledge and I know that she will amaze you as well. So without further ado, Dr. Kolb, thank you so much for joining me. Yes, thank you for that introduction. Um, Today I did a radio show um, earlier on BBS Radio where I was interviewing an author of a book on angels And she told me that Raphael had spoke to her this morning and asked that I become aware that Raphael, who is the Archangel of Healing, wanted to work more closely with our clinic. Um, I'm used to working with Michael, the Archangel, for protection, but Raphael is very interested in helping us out. That's all of us, all of us that are dealing with issues from breast implants or any other silicone problems. So we, we have a lot of um, celestial help in, in this mission that we have, and I'm very pleased about that. It's very awesome, and it was really neat when I was in your office because, you know, as I described in my, my uh, in video with my husband was that, you know, God led me to you. God showed me what was wrong with me. I was suffering for three years with no no means of finding answers through the medical system. And he pointed me in the direction of what was wrong. And then he had me researching and everything I researched pulled up you. And it was just so amazing because when I got to your office and got to meet all the other women that were there for the same thing, they said the same thing. And it was just so very awing to know that, that, you know, you have such a ministry there, you know, of pulling in women of faith and, and that you, you definitely, you know, God has his hand on, on what you are doing down there. And now the object is to reach all the women that are not of faith, that aren't being guided and aren't sure of what's going on in their bodies. That's true. Uh, many of the women who come here are specifically spiritually guided, or some of their sometimes their doctors research and are guided to tell them where to go, or 
perhaps their significant others do the research for them because they're often too ill to do their own research. Yeah. And I just want to emphasize that, you know, if you go to regular doctors with this host of symptoms, they consider it very nonspecific, you know, fatigue, muscle ache, mental clouding, um, muscle spasms, you know, all these things, they don't put it together. Right. Sometimes they'll say it's fibromyalgia, sometimes they'll say it's um, autoimmune disease, but they don't link it back to the breast implant or the silicone exposure because they've been taught, and they've actually been taught by the PR company of Dow Corning, uh, Dow Corning hired a PR company to educate, you know, in quotes, the, the doctors so that they would be convinced that implants don't cause any problems. Wow. And that includes plastic surgeons, which is kind of silly because any foreign body can get infected, and once it's infected, it causes pain. Right. And if you have a painful breast and you're sick and you and have problems, why wouldn't a doctor be able to diagnose that? But Right. I've been doing this now for almost 20 years, and many, many physicians miss infected foreign bodies. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and it's it's scary. It's scary and it's sad because, you know, for us, we have so many symptoms and we have no idea, and, you know, we're at their mercy. We need their help, but they aren't, they aren't picking up on the things, and I just kind of gave up. I gave up on the medical system because I knew that I couldn't afford all the millions of tests they'd run to figure out all the oddities I had going on, and so many of the women I spoke to, you know, were told they were put on antidepressants, and and it was in their head, and, you know, mo most women are pretty in tune with their bodies, especially ones that have already given birth, and, you know, you just know when, when your body's not not right and that there's something clearly wrong and to have all those things going on at one time it's certainly not in our head it's just there's something really drastic going on well i'll tell you what i thought happened with me okay. i um uh, i believe that whenever a problem is going to rise up that needs a solution the solution rises up at the same time hmm. so back in 1984 I was guided, I was in meditation. I was actually got sick on vacation with my family. I had a cold. So I stayed back and meditated and rather than go out with my family. And in meditation, I was guided to get Dow Corning silicone gel breast implants. Okay. And it was interesting because at the time, we were not using Dow Corning in the military. We were using a different brand. So I actually had to order these implants. Okay. But later on, um, this this tells you why it's so important to listen specifically to what you're guided to do. Later on, when I entered the settlement, the Dow Corning settlement, which was the largest settlement in history, I actually ended up getting $27,000 rather than the 3000 I would have gotten if I used the implants that we were using in the military. Wow. So that's just a little aside at, at how you have to you know, do exactly what you're guided to do rather than just something close to it. Right. So I was guided to do this. I was in the military. I was the chief plastic surgeon at Wright Pad Air Force Base, and my mentor and friend was, uh, he'd been my boss in, the, in, in residency, was at Scott Air Force Base. So I took the military transport over there, and he put breast implants in me. You know, I carried my implants with me. <laughs> and um, it was fine, and it was free. You know, that it was free back mm -hmm. then. Okay. And uh, everything went fine for about eight years. But then, as usually happens, Dow, Dow Corning came out with engineering data showing that the shell starts to get soft and leaks the gel at about eight to ten years. Right. That's why I believe that most silicone implants should be changed out every eight to ten years. Okay. But in any case, I have a detoxification defect. It's it's not. I don't know exactly which one I have, but I know I have high heavy metals. I don't methylate as well as I should. I may have some other defects, but I know that the chemicals that some women can process through their liver, I wasn't going to process. Okay. So I promptly developed fibromyalgia, okay. and um, basically the left side leaked thirty grams, and the right side didn't leak much at all. So much of the most of the symptoms were on one side. Okay. And I was savvy enough to figure out that my implant was leaking, you know, right. being a plastic surgeon. <laughs> so um, 
And I ended up having to delay my own surgery because one of the settlements, that, that $3,000 settlement that I talked about a few minutes ago, yep. that had a deadline in okay. the uh, December of 96. And I was just packed with women needing to get the, their implants out to meet that deadline. Okay. So I waited, and in January of 97, I had my implants out. I had two different surgeons. But neither one of them was savvy enough to remove the entire capsule. They removed a little bit of the capsule, but very little. And I got deathly ill. Wow. Just deathly ill. Wow. So, you know, you can't that you can't not remove the capsule. Right. And it is very, very difficult surgery. Both of these surgeons were really good surgeons. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, don't get me wrong. I wouldn't have anybody that wasn't a really good surgeon operating on me. Right. But they couldn't remove the capsule and I just went downhill. So I had to develop a detoxification program. Right. For and I had to develop it quickly or I ended up not being able to practice surgery. Wow. So um, I've learned a lot. You know, like you, I'm a researcher. I went online. I, I read books. I, I, I also had my own radio show. So I was able to interview all these different doctors that wouldn't say anything to me privately but would tell me a lot on the radio show. I thought that was interesting. Yes. But anyway, awesome. so I developed... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I developed a detoxification program for silicone and chemicals. Okay. I believe that the silicone is a little bit different than the chemicals. I didn't develop autoimmune disease. Um, I had a patient in Germany who was a doctor and a triathlon runner. Okay. Great shape. She got silicone implants, and within just a couple of months, she had, was diagnosed with five different autoimmune diseases, and she was bedridden. Wow. She had HLA B27. Other women have HLA DR53 or 54. We don't know all of the HLA types, but there are genetic HLA types where you just can't have any silicone in your body. Not even the little tiny bit they use to plug up the teardrops if you have dry eyes. Wow. You will get sick. So that's the gastric lap bands. That means testicular implants in men. It, it probably even means you know silicone that might be on pacemakers and other medical devices, even though it's just a little bit of silicone. Right. So those people have to be very, very, very wary of putting any silicone in their body. And that is silicone toxicity. Okay. I had chemical toxicity. It's more just your T cells go down, your T cell immunity goes down, you develop yeast symptoms of fatigue, muscle like mental clouding. I got real dizzy. I had neurological problems. Um, you know, basically the, the carcinogens and neurotoxins are what is in the gel. And so you have an increased risk of cancer, not breast cancer, but other cancers. And you have an increased risk of neurological problems. Right. So um, I got educated in integrative holistic medicine, which encompasses functional medicine, which is actually those detoxification pathways. Right. And I figured out how to detox using foot baths, using supplements, using liquid needle body soaks and a bath bathtub, yep. um, using whatever means we could to get these chemicals and silicone out. Now, these are not hydrophilic chemicals like arsenic and heavy metals are. They don't dissolve in water. These are hydrophobic chemicals that are like toluene, benzene, methyl, ethyl, ketone. These are... Um, ones that are more difficult to get out of the body. So it wasn't easy. Yeah. Um, and then basically, uh, it wasn't until 2005 that I discovered that the patients with saline implants, I'm not talking textured, I'm talking smooth saline implants, yep. they had a different disease. They had a biotoxin disease. In other words, the mold. Yes. that got into the implant or around the implant or both was producing a biotoxin, and they had sick building syndrome, yeah. which is also neurological, also disrupts the endocrine system. It has a lot of features similar, but it wasn't exactly the same as the chemical and silicone toxicity. So some of the silicone toxic patients had yeast and mold. Actually, 100% of those tested had yeast. They were there were three thousand women tested for yeast that had defective silicone implants, and three thousand had yeast. So you don't even have to be tested. Right. The mold, yeah. though, is is we as you know when you came to the office, we did a yes. test called a visual contrast sensitivity test to see if you had mold. Yes. And that test um, it checks the blurred vision basically. Right. 
And um, it's, I mean, it's not 100%, but unless you have a, some problem with your eye, it's pretty good. Right. And if you only have mold in your right breast implant, only the right eye will be abnormal. Yeah. So we can tell specifically even what side you've got it on. And it's important to treat the mold, to treat the yeast. Because of the problem with T-cell immunity, you also have to treat any viruses, parasites, or intracellular infections. That would be Lyme's disease and mycoplasma and C pneumonia and a bunch of other ones that probably haven't even been characterized yet, but do tend to manifest as autoimmune disease like rheumatoid arthritis or even MS. Um, so basically, uh, that's what we treat, as well as the three different kinds of toxicities, the chemical toxicity, the silicone toxicity, and the biotoxicity. Yeah, and... and Praise the Lord that you do. I feel like a new woman, and I just feel so very blessed. It's just an amazing, folks, it's amazing when you have the cause of your illness removed from your body because already an hour after my surgery, my husband came into the recovery room and couldn't believe how my color had changed, how my facial features had changed, and... Three days later, the stomach bloating that I had, I had such, everything in my abdominal area from my ovaries up to my mm -hmm. rib cage were just swollen. And three days later, right. that was gone. And just to progressively feel better and better every day. I mean, what she's talking about is so true. There were times that I had such cloudy vision, my my head just, mm -hmm. oh, I just felt awful. And, and just to feel like you're dying, to feel like you need a wheelchair because you can't maneuver. I mean, my... As I said in my video, I couldn't walk more than a quarter mile without my husband's assistance, and I am an athletic girl. We'd go out and we'd hike 21 miles in a day, my family would, and to be able to only walk mm -hmm. a quarter mile aided, you know, it brings any grown woman to tears, you know, it's just it's just not right, and it's... It, Dr. Kolb's facility is definitely a blessing, and her knowledge is just amazing. I did want to ask you, you mentioned about the T-cells. I ran into struggles with a histamine intolerance, and I am just wondering if a lot of the folks that have symptoms of the histamine intolerance uh, could also be a result of their silicone uh, or saline implants. Well, I believe that many of us, I know I did, um, I'll tell you a story about that. Um, we are allergic to silicone, and that drainage tube that you had is made of silicone. Okay. And you might have noticed that we wrapped it in a 4x4 four four so that it wouldn't touch you directly. I did. And that's because when I had my surgery, they didn't do that, and I developed a big blister. Wow. <laughs> you know, I was the experiment on that. <laughs> but uh, you, can, <laughs> you can get rid of that. Okay. And there's a great technique called NAET which is uh, developed by an Indian doctor. It's an allergy elimination technique that um, you can rid yourself of the silicone allergy. I actually have a, a Nate practitioner, Dr. Mike Greenberg, in my office that studied directly with the founder in L.A. Wow. And um, he's, he's excellent. I had a latex allergy the other day. After 30 years of being a surgeon, I broke I had welts from latex. Wow. And I just went over to him. He got rid of it, and now I wear latex gloves every day. So you don't have to put up with these dangerous allergies. Yeah. You probably know latex allergies can kill you. Yes. So, you know, you don't have to put up with it. But all of us develop uh, or could develop silicone allergies. And you'll know that because if you put these estrogen patches on, they're used to made of silicone. Okay. And the other thing a lot of women do is they develop a multiple chemical sensitivity, so they may break out to the adhesive as well. Yeah. So I go to Dr. Mike and I say, test me for silicone versus the adhesive when my pat, my estrogen patch starts to react, and it's usually one or the other, and then he clears it. Right. And if you end up with multiple chemical sensitivity, which means you can't walk through Macy's uh, makeup section and perfume section without getting sick yes <laughs> that means you need dog well no it, it, it's true i mean yeah especially real severe chemical toxicity from the implants or even biotoxicity combined you'll get multiple chemical sensitivity it really limits what you can do some people can't even go into grocery stores i was just gonna say that so, because i going through the like uh cleaning aisle at the grocery store is enough to kill you <laughs> 
Well, you were you were there. Yeah. But Dr. Comer, who is a chiropractor and a naturopath and a Chinese a traditional Chinese medical doctor. Dr. Commoner used to play with the Eagles. He's like so talented. He was a musician before he became a doctor. Yeah, cool. He has spiritual he has spiritual hearing and he brought in something called P2D2, which is the only treatment in the world for multiple chemical sensitivity and it works like a charm. <laughs> so you've got to contact his office in Marietta, Georgia and get it because it's in research right now. You can't buy it anywhere. Okay. But I send him patients all the time. You know, and, and you want to get it from him directly now because I'm sure they're going to raise the price tremendously okay. if, if it, you know, went, once it goes commercial because they always do that. Right. So get it from him because he's excellent. And um, and I, I wrote him an email the other day asking him if, if he would please start working on elect, electromagnetic sensitivity because that's the next thing that happens to people is they get sensitive to electromagnetics. So okay. it's a real problem. And um you, all of, all the women who have suspected breast implants are well on their way to developing these really serious problems where you might have to live off the grid, you know, out of just in, in a house that has all natural things, which yep. might be good for you, but it's certainly not convenient. <laughs> well, I'm ahead of the game then, being where I'm at, but... <laughs> <laughs> right. But it, it's so, there's so many things, and that's where so many illnesses and so many things that come with this. And then if it's not detox properly, there's so many things that continue to play a role. That's where I feel you are such a blessing because not only are you a medical doctor, but you practice all these other additional natural medicines. And like you said, in so many cases through already through this interview that you have been your own Guinea pig and through your experience yep. personally, you know, God took you through that experience so that you could aid your patients. And I just think that is so amazing. That was such a huge draw to me as well as all of your, um, you know, your, your abilities and in diagnosing things. So uh, that's why I was so eager to get you on here because I feel that there are so many women. Um, there's a Facebook group that when I was down in your office and was told about it, it was at 1700 and right now it's well over 2000 and growing. And there's so many women affected and so many women still seeking, you know, answers as to what's causing their, their illnesses. And like you said, it's not just women though. It could be the men. Um, the stomach belt wasn't, you know, a, just for women, it's men and women, and there's different procedures for men where this could, you know, it's not just focusing on the women. This could affect so many people. And I would love for you to share the pros and the cons of implants because there many people ask me when I talk about you, they're like, well, how can she continue to you know, be a plastic surgeon and, and do the implants when she knows what the struggles are you know, with them, but it's not, fo it's because not, not everybody's going to get sick. Yep, you exactly. Know? You know, not every, I have, I have feeling implants myself. Yep. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not, basically I'm for informed consent. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now, one of the problems I want to mention, fiber wire, which is used in a lot of orthopedic and hand procedures is coated with silicone. Oh, wow. So you could get silicone inadvertently not even knowing that you have it wow. if you have one of these orthopedic procedures. Wow. So, unfortunately, in medicine, there's a lot of silicone and a lot of different things. You have this HLA type, which is not all that common, but unfortunately, the detoxification defects, they're much more common. They're probably 30% of the population. Wow. So, if you have a detoxification defect, if you have an HLA where you can't take silicone, or if you have a intolerance to mold, in other words, you get like extremely exhausted and develop fibromyalgia symptoms when exposed to mold, you probably shouldn't get breast implants. Okay. But if you don't, if you can process chemicals properly, if you don't have that HLA type that's associated with autoimmune, and if you don't have only 25% of the population have the biotoxin problem with mold, okay. then you can have breast implants. Okay. Now, what would you? What would I recommend you avoid? I would recommend you avoid texturing. Texturing has been associated with the lymphoma, and um, the lymphoma is. I, I'm almost positive it's a chemical problem, and that um, you 
know, you just need to avoid texturing, which means you need to avoid shaped implants. Okay. And a lot of shaped implants are used in um, breast reconstruction. And an awful lot of breast cancer patients get sick after their reconstructions because they're textured. They flake off, they get in the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is already struggling with cancer, and then you add silicone to it. Well, that just can't be good. Right. And then um, basically the, you know, the other things to consider is if you're in an environment with a lot of mold, you probably shouldn't get saline implants because if you keep breathing that mold in and it gets in your sinuses, then it can get in your bloodstream and it can infect your implant, you know, or affect your implants. Right. And and that that wouldn't be good even if you don't have that problem. Right. And then the silicone, they this all the silicone implants leak. I believe the Cientra smooth silicone leak less than the Allergan, but. Um, and, you know, I think that the leakage is tolerated by most people who don't have a detoxification defect. But once that implant really starts leaking a lot or ruptures, it's my belief that everybody gets sick. I think your detoxification mechanisms are overwhelmed yeah. and you end up getting sick. So yeah. that's what I believe about implants. Now, there is fat grafting. You can put fat, fat into the breast if you have any. Um, that that's probably a better and less larger breast. It may take two or three surgeries, though, if you want to go big, you know, but if you just want a little bit of extra volume after you feed your breastfed your children, you know, that should be something you should consider. Um, there's also the ideal in saline implant, which has different val different sections in it, so that if one section deflates, the whole implant doesn't deflate. I haven't used it yet, but that's something, you know, that I just want people to be aware that it exists, too. Yeah, yeah. And for me, it was one of those that, you know, as sick as I was, I wasn't heading back in that direction. And I was just blessed to have my life back and and not move forward in, in looking in that direction. It just, back to my natural self yeah. was a blessing. But there's so many people that are looking for options. So, you know, it's, I feel that it's good that if they are going to make that decision that they're going with a doctor that they know will be looking out for them through the course of their time with them and also looking out for them with what they will implant at the time of the procedure, you know. So that's awesome to have somebody that really investigates it and doesn't just take the word of a silicone company, you know, as golden. Right. Well, we, yeah, we have, um, because we're seeing thousands of patients here with implant problems, there's really no other practice in the world that sees the problem. Right. Um, plus, we talk to a lot of other women that don't come here. So I really do know which implants are the safest, which ones have the problems. Yeah. And your regular plastic surgeon will know none of this. Right. Absolutely nothing. Right. So you really can't depend on a surgeon who doesn't see anything but implant problems to tell you which implants cause the problem. Right. And, you know, I don't get real specific on the air because, you know, it's just data here. Right. Um, but I really can tell people what implants will be best for them right. if they decide on implants. Now, most women are like you. Once they have a significant <laughs> health problem, they're not going to put anything back in. No way. Except for one group. And that's the breast cancer patients. Yes. You know, they're totally flat, okay? Yes. So a lot of times, they're, almost everybody puts silicone in the cancer patients. So if they leak, as long as they're not infected, if they leak, then it's perfectly okay to put the um, smooth saline implant back in them, okay? okay? Because they'll have something. It won't be as nice as the silicone, but it's something that they can, you know, put in a bra, Right. feel more feminine and right. you know so we do have um that's probably the most common patient that wants something back in and of course insurance is paying for it too right. that's the other financial consideration right. you know with right. with you don't want to have to spend more money taking something back out that you had to pay to put, put back, back in, in. You know, right. <laughs> yeah. right and my heart goes out to them because you know it is a it's a process getting where they are to begin with. So I totally get that. And I have, I also heard you say in another interview that I listened to uh, 
which I never had given any thought to is also burn victims and um, burn victims as children where they don't actually um, mature properly and grow properly or grow breasts. So that I had never considered that too in my thought process, you know, in thinking about the the, the yeah, dangers of it. Yeah, breast asymmetry. Yeah. You know, significant breast asymmetry where you have a deep makeup on the other. Those women are mortified to date. Yeah. You know, as, as teenagers, they just yeah. hide. Yeah. They can't be in gym class. You know, it's just very, very psychologically disruptive. Yeah. And they do, you know, the, or Poland syndrome, where, where the pec muscle in the breast doesn't develop on one side. So okay. there, there are reconstructive issues. And, you know, plastic surgery, it's all about risk and benefit, as you probably know. Right. Um, some people just don't have the risk that you had. You know, you got sick because of certain, you know, things that were unique to you. Right. Other patients might not have gotten sick with the same things happening. So, you know, you, you're, you have to, I use applied kinesiology. I figure if someone is going to be able to tolerate an implant, I'm going to best be able to tell with, with muscle testing. Right. And then that way... I know what they're going to be able to do, and so far it's been it's been at least ninety eight percent accurate. Awesome. And um, so I think that that's something that that's a tool that we can all use when we don't know. Sure. And I and I think that's that's such the benefit. I with you and your open mind. I mean, I just I I never questioned. I mean, I came across you. I read your credentials. I read up on you everywhere I looked. You showed up, and I booked my appointment with you with no reserve, no question, and I came down there with such a peace about it where my family was a little concerned, traveling so far, what if something happens later, you should, use, <laughs> yeah. you should use a local doctor. So I checked with the local doctors, and I was so displeased to find that they weren't removing the capsule, that they wanted to deflate what I had and leave them in there for three more right. months for me to be sick for three more months when I didn't think I was going to oh, make it another... Uh, oh, I was just so... So I knew I was in the right hands, and that's why I feel it's so important for me to interview you and to talk to people and let people know of you because I really feel that you, with right. your knowledge, will give them their full life back through the detox and through your knowledge. Well, let me tell you a little bit about um, some experiences patients have had when that saline implant was deflated with a needle. You know, what they do, they bring in the office, they stick a big needle in, they numb you up first, yeah. but they stick a big needle in and take the saline out. Yep. But if that saline is contaminated with yep. bacteria or fungus, yep. you can get the most horrific chest wall infection. I have, I've had several patients come to me after that was done. And one of them ended up with being on antibiotics, including IV antibiotics, and massive doses of antifungals for a year yeah. before we got control of that infection. So, oh, yeah. yeah. All I can say is <laughs> I don't know how, you know, you would avoid that. I, would, I don't know how you would know, especially when the person was sick, right. how would you know there wasn't bacteria or fungal elements inside that implant? Right, and there were. For me, there were, you know. Um, right. And, and so I would have been deathly, deathly sick. I would have had to go through three different procedures with him to get it finished. And the, ch and, and the well, cavity... I probably wouldn't have been able to take the capsule out. That's usually what happens. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so... The capsule's hard to get out. Last night, you know, you hear my voice. It's a little weak. Yes. Yesterday, it took me six hours to get... The capsules out around a textured saline implant wow. that was put in through the axilla. So it was way high up. I mean, the pocket was gigantic. There was a capsule clear up into the axilla. It was bloody. It was infected. It was friable. Wow. She's doing fine today. In fact, she's doing pretty well today, but I'm a mess. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm getting bold for this. You know? No, <laughs> no it's, it's, Dr. Gordon was at the hospital. You know, Usually I have Dr. Gordon do one side. Dr. Right. Gordon was at the hospital doing another patient with a cardiac condition that couldn't be done here. Wow. And, uh, and so and I wanted to mention that yesterday we had our JCO inspection. 
And he was very, very impressed with our center. He told my um, uh, he told my manager that he wanted to see where I was five years from now because he thought that we were going to do very, very well. JACO is the highest level of certification you can get with a surgical center. Yeah. I, back in 1999, we had a three-day inspection because then it was like a hospital inspection. It didn't have ambulatory center inspections. For three days, they went through everything. There were two nurses and a doctor. I got 99 out of 100, and they asked me to be a JACO inspector. Wow. And so you can imagine. Now, we've been inspected every three years. We've never had a death, never cracked the crash card here. We do extremely difficult surgeries here yeah. on very sick people, and they do very well. I want, you know, because I know a lot of people are real concerned about not being in a hospital, but you know what? Oh, yeah. If you don't have a heart or lung problem and you have a T cell immunity problem, you don't want to be in a hospital. Yeah. People in hospitals get C. diff. They yep. get staph, methicillin resistant staph. They get things that you just don't want to get. They get viruses, you yeah. know. Yeah. Viruses go around. I mean, Dr. Gordon came in this morning and he said, I think I'm getting sick because I was at the hospital yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, over, he's just, I'm overworked. Now my throat's getting sore. And I said, You got to quit going to the hospital. And that's where all the viruses are. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> Very true. It makes me nervous going into the hospitals, and I'm a, I'm the one that carries my essential oils with me and makes sure I'm sniffing it good before I go in anywhere where I'm going to get infected. But your office, that is something that we were really impressed with, too, is just the way you have your office set up, the care that we received, and... Um, I felt like I was in very good hands. You know, normally when I go in for a procedure of any kind, even the dentist, I, I'm a wimp. I hate the dentist more than anything on the planet. And, you know, it makes me nervous. And I, I'll go in to get it, have a procedure done, and I'll just be all shaky and all nerved up. And I can't tell you how at peace I was to just be there and to know that there was a light at the end of the tunnel that I was going to get my life back. And, and I have. I have. It's just amazing to go, you know... Um, that was January 29th, and today is March 12th. And from Friday to Friday, I was able to walk 24 miles, uh, you know, each day progressively walking. And t t two months ago, I couldn't walk a quarter mile without help. So I, I can't yeah. thank you enough for giving me my life back. I mean, I'm, I feel indebted to you, and I want, I want other people to find you. And that's something else that really is on my mind is a lot of people are looking for doctors, but they don't know what to look for. Can you give a little insight on that as far as what you would recommend they look for if they can't afford to get to you in Atlanta, Georgia? What would you recommend? Well, right now, um, you're going to need two different types of doctors. The surgeons don't have the medical knowledge right. to treat the disease. The disease is very complex. Yes. The only doctors that I know that can treat this would be integrative holistic doctors that have a lot of experience with mold, intracellular infections, and do applied kinesiology. Okay. Uh, you can't treat this disease without applied kinesiology, in my opinion. Um, you have to determine everything. that We treat the, you know, we treat the intracellular infections for even six months after you leave here. We treat the mold and the yeast yeah. for two or three months. Um, you know, it's not just a one-time thing that you come get your surgery and then all of a sudden you're well. Right. In some cases, you have to treat all these co-infections. Right. So you're going to need to find a doctor that can do that because just the, just the surgery alone isn't enough in most people. Right. There's some people that the surgery is all they need. Yeah. If the capsule's not totally removed, and like I said, that can be a real job, like three hours per side, like last night. Yeah. Um, unless you, you're going to experience what I experienced, which was she get really much worse after surgery. Right. And with the mold situation, you may never recover if they leave even a part of the capsule in. Yeah. I do redos all the time. If the if the if the surgeon isn't confident that he or she can get the capsule out, and drains need to stay in for one week yeah. usually, yeah. very in almost everybody it's about a week and sometimes a little longer. Okay. Um, then you're you know you're not going to get the right surgery, and hardly anybody. I, I don't think anybody now removes the silicone laden axillary lymph nodes for silicone toxicity. Right. And that is absolutely necessary, especially with textured implants 
or with silicone leaking out of the silicone implants, those lymph nodes need to come out. And if they don't, you remain ill um, because there's a great deal of silicone there. The one last night, there were three lymph nodes per side, and each were, you know, at least the size of, of a large marble. You know, that's a lot of silicone to be sitting in the axilla. Right. So, um, so basically, that needs to be done. I don't know anybody else that's doing lymph nodes, and I can't really recommend anybody do the lymph nodes because we see so many complications. Um, so I, I'm hesitant to, to recommend anybody because they're d more difficult. They're way more difficult than cancer lymph nodes. Okay. So there's nobody out there doing them. Okay. Uh, so as far as the surgery goes, um, you know, we're, we're hopeful that there'll be a financial solution pretty soon. That, you know, we talked about me coming back on the radio yes. show to announce one official. Yes. Um, I think that, you know, you just need to determine, I mean, a lot of people did uh, fundraising online. Yes. You know, they didn't have any money at all, but they were able to go online and do fundraising, and they were able to come here and have the surgery. So I think, you know, if, if, you, if you really want to have something manifest, you've got to pray about it, you've got to follow your guidance. Yep. You can use angel flight. You know, you, you can actually use angel flight to get here. Um, you know, there's transportation things. There's um, there's uh, uh, people that will help you. Uh, she, one of the patients from England came over, and she didn't have anybody with her. Uh, one of my patients came down from Tennessee and stayed with her. You know, never met. They met online. Yeah, awesome. So, you know, awesome. you, you know there's a of really Christian things that happen if you open yourself up to it, you know. Very true. But if you've got problem, I mean, if you're one of these people that always puts the negative side and doesn't think that anything good ever happens to you, well, that's what's going to manifest. Yeah. So, Amen. You know, the first thing you have to do is change, change your attitude about yeah. your worthiness and your, you know, your, your ability to get well and your ability to accept, you know, money gifts from others. Yeah your ability to accept gifts from the universe, you know. Yep, yep. So it, it's, it's really a spiritual thing that is going on, you know. Can you shift enough to allow the good things to happen, or are you going to decide in your mind that it'll never happen and then it won't? It's so true. The, so many people don't realize the power of positive thinking, and that is so me. And, you know, through this experience, my family has really grown because I totally stepped out in faith when I, when I was, when it was revealed to me what it was and you kept showing up and I knew in my heart, I just knew that God had led me to you. And it was, it was essential that I, if I was going to live, I needed to get to you. And that was how I felt at the time. And I just came, you know, the next morning I said to my husband, I said, you know, I said, I'm stepping out in faith. God is telling me this is what I need to do. We didn't have two pennies to rub together to get down there. And a day later, a friend, I had confided in a friend what was going on and she started a fundraiser for us. And, you know, we didn't get enough to cover our, my surgery and things, but I got enough to get us down there and back. And, and that was right. all that mattered, you know, and, and you just need to take one day at a time. But there is something to be said about positive healing. You know, I have it in my mind that I'm going to be well and every day I feel better. And, you know, it's like Dr. Culp said, I'm going to, I'm one of those people that's going to need at least six months to detox my body because I was so full of biotoxins and mold and fungus and, and I did have uh, leakage, so, you know, there's still uh, silicone in my body, and I'm one of those great individuals that doesn't process things properly, so I need to really uh, need some additional help getting the metals out of my system. And, uh, but I'm a believer that through the power of positive thinking, it's going to happen, and I want to be well. So it's a matter of how bad do you want to be well, you know, and, and it is very true. You can change the outcome of your life and the outcome of things you have to go through by the way you look at them and process them. And it's such a true, true thing. One of the sections in the angel book that I, I read this morning before the interview talked about the fact that your guardian angels, we each have two guardian angels and your guardian angels know what you need. Mm -hmm. And so say you need, you know, a certain amount of money to come to Atlanta in order to get your health back. There's really no problem with your angels getting you that money. 
Um, that's what, I mean, that is really the truth. There's all sorts of ways that you can get money. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm sitting in front of my sign here in my hallway, <laughs> and it says, Argue for your limitations, and sure enough, they're yours. That was Richard Bach back in 1977. He wrote Jonathan Living. <laughs> Ego. So, you know, the minute in your mind you say, I can't afford it, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't, or I won't, or this won't happen, or then you have established walls that your guardian angels cannot go through. Yep. Yep. I believe that. So. I, I so believe that. And funny story, when we were down there, you had given me some prescriptions to be filled, and we took them all over there. And our insurance, we have Christian Healthcare Ministries, and it's a great program, but you need to pay everything up front, and then they reimburse you. So that can be a little tough at times, especially when you're going through something like this, which is more costly. And we really didn't have a lot of uh, funding. Uh, we lived very frugally and, and, you know, just it wasn't something that we had. And when I put the prescriptions in, the fellow said it would be $743 for everything. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So I walked away and I said to my husband, I'm like, what do we do? Because we had $300 in our checking account at that point. <laughs> and he goes, you know what? You got here on faith this whole time and I've been watching the miracles. Why would you stop now? And I'm like, all right. Turned around, handed the guys, the guy the prescriptions, walked away. We needed food to eat that night. We grabbed a couple things and came back. And when he rang us up, it was $271. And I said, did you get everything? And did you get my food? And I, he said, yes. He said, I gave you a discount. There you go. <laughs> now, that $300 was still for our rental car and to pay for our luggage to get back home. So we were now short. But at that point, you know what? I had such total faith that God was going to provide. We came home and we had $27.43 to our name, but we made it home. And now we're taking one day at a time. <laughs> he provided. Well, you tell your guardian angels. <laughs> Tell your guardian angels to get that money into your stat. <laughs> <laughs> it was very awesome to watch, and it was really neat for my for me to watch my husband watching me with such total faith. And I can't tell you how good it feels right. when you really have that much faith in the outcome of something, the peace it gives right. you. You know, so I I have grown and I have learned so much through this process too. And you know, it's something that I I feel needs to be carried on too and transferred over to all these other people that are suffering is that if there's a will, there's a yep. way. And I'm one of those people. Don't tell me I can't because I will. <laughs> so, yeah. and you know, looking at all these, I'm in my front, front room here and I'm looking at all these prescription drug cards too. Yeah. We have four different ones right here that you could pick up and, you know, use for prescriptions at the pharmacy. And then we have a pharmacy which, you know, things are very, very inexpensive in our pharmacy compared yep. to, you yep. know, regular pharmacy. So there are, there are ways to, you know, to get things at a better price. You just have to be aware of it. Yep. And, and ask, don't be afraid to ask, you know, cause I didn't ask in that case, but I'm, I'm one of those people that have learned early in my life that if you ask the worst somebody's going to say is no, you know, or not have an answer for you. But I learned early because of not asking and missing out on things to ask. It's that simple. Just ask. And and she's right. Uh, they, they have a great pharmacy there. They have uh, the supplements all available to you and their prices are really great. And I just, I, I feel it was just an overall good experience. Everything's in one place. It just makes it very simple, especially when your mind is not working and you're foggy and, and you're sick. And it was just, it was just interesting to see some of the other women walk in, and I think it's interesting that she caters to people all over the world. You know, people are seeking her out and finding her from all over the world. And But seeing some of these women walking around holding their stomachs and hunched over, and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm like, she's in here for an explant. I know she is. Look how she's holding herself. And it's because I couldn't even sit straight. Yeah. You know, so it's just, it's awesome to get your life back and it's awesome to know there's hope. And that's what I am trying to share is that there is hope in this and that there is uh, an opportunity for recovery if you're willing to embrace it. So for those of you that are struggling, please don't hesitate to reach out to Dr. Kolb. And you mentioned about the doctors, about finding the two different types of doctors. So for the surgeons, folks, you need to look for somebody that's going to do the full capsule um, removal and and again like she mentioned that may be hard to find so if you are determined to find somebody in your area i'm sorry go ahead and someone who's done a lot of them right because just someone 
done under 50. The first 50 I did, I wasn't that good at it, okay? okay. I have to admit, compared to what I am now. So it takes time and experience to get really good. Okay, good advice then. Because she, Dr. Kolb caters to over a thousand patients and, and, and it is, and that was, that was very, um, transparent information that she just shared there. So, you know, be willing to, to really interrogate these doctors and make sure that they are going to do for you what you need them to do. And the other thing is, is there a place they can go to find the natural doctors? Is there a website or anything that they can locate somebody? Yeah, I would go to holisticmedicine.org. Okay. Um, you can actually get your boards in integrative holistic medicine. I got mine back in 2000. Okay. I was one of the founding diplomats of the American Board of Holistic Medicine. Okay. Awesome. And so there are people educated. Now, not all, doc- not all holistic doctors are going to be able to help you. They need to be able to do applied kinesiology. They need to be able to give antifungals. Right. They need to be able to understand how to treat intracellular infections with things other than just antibiotics. Right. Um, you know, in other words, have a patient population where they're actively treating them. Right. Because these are difficult diseases. And um, uh, the other thing I want to tell you, do not let your animals lick your face uh, when you have this disease. Even if your animal is not sick, they can be carrying something. And these diseases are very prevalent and I, and I muscle test for the cause of the Lyme, for the cause of the mycoplasma, or the cause of the parasite. And nine times out of ten, it's the animal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I so believe that. You're sick, you not, and don't go in a swimming pool that you let your dog swim in, you know. Yeah. Just don't do it. Or don't take a bath when the dog's been in the bathtub without really Cleaning. wiping it down with something. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's great advice. Yeah, because... It- and you end, just end up more sick. Yeah, we now the husbands are fine. The husbands they can let the you know I mean it's not everybody. It's just it's just the women with these these immune system problems. Right, okay? right. I don't understand. You know, it, it's just it's just that, and just be very very careful because I feel that the the people with pets have a lot harder course ahead of them. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, and it's just, it was weird when I was really, really sick, my immune system seemed to be, like, top-notch. Like, I mean, it was working so hard. I couldn't, I I didn't get sick. And if I had a cut, it would heal really fast, which I know is opposite of a lot of, from what, of a lot of what I read. And then Uh now that I have had these removed... My immune system is, and I'm taking so many things to build my immune system, but I am very susceptible more so now than I was before just because of the difference in my immune system and the difference in my body reacting to the removal of these. So, you know, you you definitely, you, like you said, it may not be something where these these are removed and you instantaneously are well. It's going to be a process. And if you're really in tune with your body and you pay attention to what your body's telling you, you know, you'll learn as you go and learn sometimes what's causing things or what you need to do and what you need to do differently. I've just always been very in tune with my body and I'm thankful for that. It can be a, it can be a scary thing at times when I was sick, you know, knowing that my liver was failing and knowing that my adrenals and my lymph glands and everything else was just shutting down and struggling. So it can be a little scary, but at the same time, it has been an aid in helping me uh, to progress also. Well, I think that um, right after the surgery, there's an increase in chemical toxicity and biotoxicity because of the way we have to squeeze the implant while we're getting it out. Okay. So probably, if you think about it, the immune system problem is just because your body's handling an increased toxic load during that time frame. I, that totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. And I can always tell when I'm processing something because I will, my face will get really warm and I'll get redness on my cheeks and forehead. And I can just always tell when I'm processing something really heavy through my body. So, you know, in those cases, uh, I feel, and I believe it's proven that when you sleep and sleep really good, and get into those deep sleeps that your body is able to heal the best that it can. So I try to rest as much as I can when I know I'm processing things. And also being active helps push the toxins out of your body, correct? 
Yeah, it does. Um, we don't really recommend you do infrared saunas or even regular saunas mm. when you have implants in. Some mm-hmm. women have noticed that that really increases the release of toxins from the implant, which makes sense. I do want to say this, that there's a disease out there called POTS, P-O-T-S, okay. which is an autonomic condition that I think I figured out the cause to. So if anybody out there, whenever they get up too fast, passes out, wow. I think you have still toxicity because these hydrophobic chemicals dilate the veins. Like if somebody has chemical toxicity on one side because it's leaking, okay. a lot of times the veins on the arm are real dilated. Okay. And, of course, if the veins are dilated all over your body and you get up too fast, guess what happens? You pass out because the blood goes to your feet and not to your brain. Huh. But POTS can be cured with electrolysis foot baths to get out the hydrophobic chemicals and other detox methods, maybe infrared saunas, because that also helps. Okay. But if you have implants, please don't do these saunas, because I think it could in- increase the, um, you know, the leakage rate wow. of, the, of the implant. Wow, that's interesting. Very good information. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, yeah, because every, you know... A lot of people that I've talked to were doing the same thing, especially those that are involved in natural medicines. I've been involved in natural medicine since I'm 14, and I spoke to a couple of women in your office that were there for explants, and they are also certified in natural medicine. So they, of course, were self-diagnosing just like I was. And, you know, you're constantly trying to find something that will... Um, help you to reduce your symptoms, help you to feel better, help you to figure out what's going on, you know, so that I could see somebody heading to the sauna to make an effort in, in improving how they feel. So that's great information. Yeah, it really, I think heat causes the chemicals to come through quicker. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I just, I encourage you ladies that are out there that have had explants or that are going to explant to slowly get involved in, in walking, anything physical, because I can't tell you how much better I feel in just getting out. And I'm an outdoor girl to begin with, so being out there in the fresh air and just taking it all in. And of course, I'm in an area where we are back in, in the middle of the wilderness and it's fresh air. I don't get any city air back here. So it's just really refreshing to me, but you know, that has played a huge role, I think in my improvement. And I encourage you to, you know, take that angle and, and try to be as physical as you possibly can. And one caveat, if you have fibromyalgia, yes, you should avoid, um, air, you know, real strenuous exercise because, It'll put you in bed for a week. Your Krebs cycle's not working right, okay. and you can't process things. Your mitochondria aren't processing things correctly, and what happens is you get a huge buildup of lactic acid, and you're sore and can't move. You know, you just yeah. like you're in bed for a week. After. I played tennis when I had fibromyalgia, oh, wow. and I couldn't move for four days. You know, it was just really, really painful. It causes But once the fibromyalgia it happens, exercise is good. Yeah. My girlfriend has fibromyalgia and she gets a lot of those flares. So I totally get that too. So thank you for sharing that. And I think we've covered a lot of different things in regard to this. So, um, she mentioned the difference in the implant. She, uh, uh, one thing we didn't touch on, I, I've read it in a couple different places. Um, breast implants can actually, um, keep cancer at bay and also help those with cancer. Is that correct? The ones that have had cancer, it'll, it'll eliminate them from most likely getting it again with the implants in there. Is that correct? Yeah. The data that comes from um, retrospective studies as well as animal rat studies is that breast implants um, probably cause a fourfold less incidence in breast cancer uh, in some women. And there's three reasons for this. One is pressure, okay. one is cytokine, and one is silica. Silica is the anti-cancer. That's well known. Okay. In Russia, where there's high levels of silica in the water, there are low cancer rates. Hmm. Cytokines, uh, when, the, when the silicone starts to leak out of the shell, it's picked up by white cells, um, macrophages, Okay. But it kills the macrophage, and the macrophage dumps its content around 
Um, they're called cytokines or inflammatory factors. One of them is tumor necrosis factor. So perhaps the cancer in the area of the breast wouldn't form because of massive cytokines. And in fact, in some cancer clinics, we actually inject cytokines hmm. because cyt high levels of cytokines kill cancer. Okay. So, and, then it's, and for bladder cancer as well as breast, pressure prevents cancer from forming. Huh. Um, so if there were patients that came down here with the BRCA gene, and they would muscle test to get breast implants. In other words, it was good for them, okay? Right. It's, and remember, it's all, it's all risk versus benefit. Right. They could have breasts off like Angelina did, but I think it's a bit, you know, over the top. Right. Um, unless you're specifically guided to do so. Right. Which she may have been, but I would prefer to put breast implants in somebody and monitor them, you know, the ways we have to monitor them with muscle testing and other other ways that we have, because right. I think we can prevent most breast cancers. You know, I think they're very preventable. Mm -hmm. So, um, so basically, that was true. But then texturing, I think I mentioned this before, the yep. texturing yep. Um, has... Uh, three things, um, I think aluminum, I think a chemical, and then some other factor, which I believe is silicone itself, you put those three factors together, and I believe lymphocytes will turn malignant in culture. Wow. So that particular thing, it's only textured, it's not smooth. Okay. Texturing puts people at risk for lymphoma. Okay. So those, mar those implants are still in the market, by the way. Yeah. So that shows you how the FDA is protecting the public. Yeah. And what they're saying is that it's very rare. And I'm not so sure it's that rare. But, you know, that's just my opinion from seeing all the problems and seeing how many of my patients ended up with lymphoma. Yeah. But I do say that it is very important. And I, the guy that wrote, uh, the doctor that wrote the paper on this, Dr. Brody and I had about an hour-long conversation. And I told him that I felt it was important to remove enlarged abnormal silicone-laden lymph nodes in the axilla in order to prevent that lymphoma, and he said that he agreed. He thought that it was. So yeah. we're really the only clinic in the world removing those yeah. those lymph nodes. Yeah, yeah, and I was very... I think, I think if, you're getting, if you had textured implants and you don't have your lymph nodes removed, you're still at risk yeah. for the rest of your life, that lymphoma. Yeah. So uh, that's not good. And just having that silicone in your body like that, I mean, I just can't imagine. I, I just know what it's like with all the toxins I've had, and and I had saline-filled ones, and I didn't have any struggles with my, and I did have smooth, so I didn't have any struggles with my lymph glands, thankfully. But I was glad to, and, and thankful to be, to know that walking out of there, I was, I, everything was checked, and everything was, I was safe to move forward, you know, so... So that's important to know, and I think it's good for people to know that they do have, you know, that that it can be checked. It can, you may be able to have them if you choose to have them. If you're ill, there are options, and there is hope to to gain your life back. And I, I, the FDA is a whole other can of worms and subject, and I won't even go there today because I can't tell you how absolutely furious I am that there's things out there, including our food that aren't being regulated properly. So, you know, but there is hope for us and there is, there is hope for so many out there and let's just spread the word. If you've listened to this interview and you know somebody, please pass it on. Please have them listen to it. If you know somebody that's not well and has not been well for a long time and they do have some sort of silicone in their body, there's a good chance that that is what is causing their problems. And um, be sure to check out Dr. Kolb's book. You can find... Um, more information on her book at the Naked Truth About Breast Implants dot com. She's got all kinds of information on there as well as uh, you can purchase the book there, and you can also find her at Plasticos dot com. That is P L A S T I K O S dot com, and um, you will find all of her links, her information on the show notes, and you will be hearing a lot more about her because. She has a very unique clinic down there, and she does very unique things. And in the conversations I've had with her, I know that she is a wealth of information on a lot of different subjects that I know you will all benefit from. So I know that she will be joining me more often on some other topics and other ailments. And um, 
But Dr. Kolb, this has been a great interview. I wanted to open the floor up to you and see if there was anything else you felt you wanted to touch on that we may have missed today. Well, I just wanted um, people to take a look at the website, www.plasticoast.com. That's P-L-A-T-I-S. Wait a minute. P-L-A-S-T-I-K-O-S. Plasticoast. Okay. Plasticoast means to mold in Greek. Okay. So that's why we chose the name. Okay. And they can also um, take a look at Millennium Healthcare. Uh, there's links to that website. There's a huge amount of information on the website, including a lot of um, articles on silicone-related illnesses, on um, cancer, on uh, a lot of different uh, alternative holistic health, health uh, topics. And, um, you know, thank God for the Internet. We can... Yes. We can... Uh, mm -hmm. Listen to podcasts like yours. We can research things. Um, we can gather our own information because the majority of plastic surgeons are going to tell you that silicone doesn't cause any problem, and that was scientifically proven. <laughs> but if you look in the peer-reviewed medical literature, there are dozens of articles on the damage that silicone causes. So yes. it's really sad that the plastic surgeons don't read the literature yeah. and tell their patients wrong information. But they do. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. And on your website, it also has your detox uh, information on there as well? It does. Yeah. Um, but, it, again, a caveat. This right. is a complicated program. Right. If you're going to do it, you need to have a practitioner that does applied kinesiology do it with you. Okay. Because, again, we're, we're treating multiple co-infections. We're treating three different kinds of toxicity, yeah. and everybody has a different combination. You know, yes. it's like yep. it's like seven different things, and you got to roll the dice, and then you have to know what to see it with. And yep. it's too complicated just to do it with a cookbook. You can't. Right, right, and and nobody. It's not a cookie cutter thing. You know, we're all so different. We all have different environmental things that play a role. There's so much to it. And the thing is, too, if you don't do it right, you're still going to remain sick. So it's really important that you realize that you can't just go and buy things off the shelf and think that you're going to be able to heal yourself. You really do need help. And I am somebody who I will try to self-medicate and try to educate and learn what I can and take care of myself. But in this case, I know that I can't do that. I don't have the knowledge to do everything I need to do, and I want to be well. So I hope that you, you do consider that and, and do really, you know, embrace making sure that your body is clear of all the toxins and all the metals and all the silicone that's in your body. Yeah, education is very, very important. So thank you for doing this show. Oh, yes. And um, <laughs> it's just great to be able to reach out and educate people that may never have uh, even realize why they're sick. I mean, if yes. you don't know that you're sick from your implants, you're not going to be able to research it on the Internet. Exactly. Exactly. I was very blessed that God showed me. It was like a neon sign flashing in front of my eyes and my mouth just dropped open. I mean, I was searching for three years for answers. And I know many of you that are listening and have struggles have been, uh, some of you have been searching longer. So I know that there have been many women that have 10 10 years plus that have been sick and suffering and feeling like they're dying and, and something else that I, you know, that was noted, uh, with the breast implant illness is the, um, uh, depression rate and the suicide rate. And that's something that I just feel so driven to just get the word out there so that we can save lives, not just in the X planning, but eliminating people from committing suicide because they feel worthless, they're sick and a burden to their families, but you won't be if there is hope. Yeah, the, the three things the women die of are infection because of the immune problems, yep. suicide, and cancer. There's a much higher cancer rate of everything except breast cancer. Yep. Brain, pancreas, colon, lung. Yep. So, um, and of course, those are pretty deadly cancers usually. Right. So, um, it's it's important to understand that this is this is quite um, this this illness will shorten your life significantly. Yeah. Um, we know that because um, there were 450 women enrolled in the Dow Corning, uh, you know, class action lawsuit, and it took 12 years for them to pay it out. 
and the nurse that was doing all the phone calls to get them to get their money told me that half of them had died. Wow. And they said, she said it was a half that didn't see me. Oh, uh, so, I believe it. I believe it I, is so scary. I had, <laughs> yeah, I had one suicide. Yeah. These are the deaths I've had. Um, about five lymphomas, one suicide, and one uh, patient with a Benadryl overdose wow. that actually killed me. She was having an allergic reaction to tetracycline. Oh. Um, and, you know, that was sad because she was she, she was allergic to tetracycline, and I'd ask her not to take any, and she took it anyway. And then she took it too much Benadryl and quit breathing. Oh. But that's it. I mean, oh. that's all the deaths I've had. And, yeah. you know, some of my women were just deathly ill, deathly ill on doors, death's doorstep. Yeah. And they're still okay, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so, my husband so those, has my husband. Those are what people die. Yeah. Well, and my husband has quoted you a couple times in conversations with people because I really felt like I was dying. And when I when what he says to people is, you know, she's in the office and she says to her, she felt like she was dying, and the doctor said, "Well, you didn't feel like it. You were, you know, my body was slowly right. dying of all the garbage that was in it." Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so folks, know there is hope, and don't feel that Dr. Kolb is out of your reach if you live several states away. I live in Idaho, and I went to her, and I went to her in faith, knowing that she was going to save my life. And it's like we talked about earlier. If you will it to happen, and you have strong enough faith that it, things will all come together, they will. They truly will. And and you need to put your life ahead of anything else that's going on at the moment because your health, without your health, your family will it needs you. Uh, and and I'm not I'm not I wasn't about to give up any more of my life once I found out what it was. I already lost three years of my life, and that is just disturbing to me. So I, I want to live my life and I don't want to leave any stones unturned. And I hope that you all embrace this and, and really find the help you need. And don't put limitations on what your angels can bring to you. Amen. Please. Amen. Don't put limitations. Amen. Don't, and don't you know, have limitations. Yeah. And you know what? You said something earlier too, that really struck me receiving gifts from others that you allow yourself to receive gifts from others. That was the absolute hardest thing for my husband and I, because we are normally on the giving end. We are normally the one helping others. And it was very hard. God really had to humble us because it was really hard to take gifts from other people. But at the same time, a friend told me many years ago that if you don't receive the gifts of others, you're stopping them from being a blessing to you. So it's a very, right. it's a very interesting thing to have to experience, and it has taught us a lot, and was very humbling to us. But God blessed us, and our angels blessed us, and so many of you out there have blessed us, and we really thank you because without you, I would, I, I would have lost my life to this if I hadn't known what it was and hadn't been able to get the help I needed. So I really appreciate you all for listening, and Dr. Kolb, I really appreciate you joining me today. Do you have any other last words you'd like to share with our audience? No, I just want to. Uh, I just want to tell people that w if they have any illness, that they need to pray mm -hmm. that the cause of the illness be revealed to them, so that that it can be treated properly. Not just take a medication for the rest of your life and not know the cause. For example, if you have high blood pressure that's difficult to control, consider that it may be mercury toxicity, wow. and get your fillings removed and get the mercury detox from your body. Don't just accept that you, just because your doctor says, we don't know what causes this, pray about it, ask for it to be revealed to you. Your angels will get the revelation to you. If you have cancer, there are causes of cancer. If you have Alzheimer's there's, or a family member is getting a memory loss, there are causes of Alzheimer's. Every single disease on this planet has a cause. Mm -hmm. And in order to treat it, we need to know the cause. Yep, yep. <laughs> Such great advice, such great advice, because so many people take the, you know, the word of their doctor and, and when they say that there's nothing else they can do, they just accept that. And I, th I think it's, it plays that role in us being investigative and, 
doing our own due diligence and trying to find answers ourselves, especially like you said, we had the internet today where we didn't have that before, you know, and now there's so much information out there. It can make you like a deer in headlights when you find all the information, but when you pray and ask God to guide you, he will guide you to the right things and he will put answers in front of you. And that was such great advice. I so appreciate you saying that. <laughs> well, but, thank you so much for the interview. It was lovely talking with you again. And hopefully yes. I can come back on later and tell, tell the world what I've learned about some of these other diseases. I would love that. I would absolutely love that. And also when your other program opens up, I would love to get you back on for that as well. But Thank you so much for joining. Again, this was Dr. Susan Kolb. She is out of Atlanta, Georgia, and you can find her on uh, plasticos.com, and it's P-L-A-S-T-I-K-O-S.com, and she has links on there for her Millennium Healthcare as well, and you can find her book at the Naked Truth About Breast Implants. Dot com. And again, thank you, Susan. Thank you all for joining me. You guys take care. And until our next show, God bless. You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where you will learn something new every week. We hope you enjoyed the show and encourage you to join us at TreyerWilderness.com. And be sure to connect with us on iTunes. Remember, your reviews on iTunes are very important to us and help us reach more people just like you. 